My family used to move around a whole lot. That meant that when I was younger, I was always changing schools. It got to be very hard to make friends, not only because of the moving, but because I always expected to be moving again pretty soon. And that kept me from wanting to make friends, because we moved so often that it seemed futile. So I just mostly kept to myself when I entered a new school. Well, anyone who has been in school knows how the loners are treated, especially in middle school. That was where I was in my education when this story took place, and my family had moved to a semi-rural area. And I remember this as being the worst time of my life, and I still consider it that way. I was in the seventh grade at the time. I remember this is the year I turned 13. I was a bit of a small kid, and the fact that I was quiet and a loner just made this whole thing worse on me. The bullying started pretty early, and it was pretty nasty too. In fact, it had gotten so bad that I would try to make myself sick in the morning sometimes to avoid going to school. I would wear wet socks to bed or something, because back then we actually thought something like that could make you sick. There was constant name-calling. Kids would always try to force me into fights when I didn't want to fight, and for no reason. Hell, I remember once these two bullies held me while another burst a water balloon on me, and then they went around joking and telling everyone that I had a wet dream. It was horrible and humiliating just being at that school. And the worst part of it all is that the teachers at the school never did anything about it. It was on the bus, too. A few of the guys who gave me a hard time at school were on the bus and thus lived in the same general area as I did. But fortunately, I lived about 45 minutes away from school and out in the country. So being home was always the best thing for me because I never encountered any of the bullies who tormented me there. Summer vacation was obviously my favorite time of the year, and that particular summer, it was even more welcome than before. I was able to just be home and not have to deal with the constant torment that was visited upon me. One of my favorite things was to go exploring out in the woods, and I would do that maybe a few times a week during the summer. There was a lot of woods in the area, and I was never short of space to explore. Sometime in the middle of the summertime, I was out exploring in an area that I had never been in before. I had come across some berry bushes before, and was surprised to find lots of blackberries. And I decided I would pick them and bring them home because they were really pretty good. I got really upset at one point when I came across a dead squirrel. It was obvious that the squirrel had been shot and it was just left dead there. Whoever shot it was doing it for fun, not for food. I later found a bird that was in the same condition. It was heartbreaking to see any of it, and I wondered why people like to kill animals for fun. While I was out hiking in this new area, I heard some of what sounded like footfalls every now and then. I never encountered any people when I was out exploring. I only once in a while came across an animal that wasn't a bird or squirrel, but it was never anything dangerous before but the footfalls I was hearing seemed like they were something bigger. It wasn't something that bothered me. I didn't think there were any big dangerous cats or anything like that around. But I did get concerned, though, when I heard what sounded like someone was laughing, because then I knew that, if I had heard it correctly, there was a person out there in the woods with me. My first thought was that I could get in trouble for trespassing. I didn't know who owned the land that I was exploring on so I began to get a little scared. I decided I would travel back toward my house, or at least try and find a road and walk along that. So I went off, and I kept hearing sounds that indicated that someone was in the woods with me, and I kept looking around, trying to see who it could be. But whenever I looked in the direction of the sounds, I didn't hear anything. Then I heard the laughing sound again, and when I turned around to face it this time, my heart froze in my chest. I was terrified because I was looking at a kid named Billy, who bullied me hard in school, and he was with his friend Kyle, who also bullied me. And the scariest thing of all was that both of them had rifles. They emerged from behind the trees to face me. I didn't know what to do, and I was terrified from the scary smiles on their faces. I thought about the dead squirrel and the dead bird, and I was positive that these two kids killed them. Kids my age at the time shouldn't be out in the woods with rifles. I am sorry, being 13 and doing that is just wrong. And the proof I have is that both of them pointed their rifles right at me. 
Billy taunted me, calling me horrible names. I actually have rather full lips for a boy, and the boys called me N-word lips all the time. And they started calling me then. I turned to run, and as soon as I did, I heard a gunshot. I didn't feel anything, so I know that I didn't get shot myself. But I was terrified by it, and I fell to the ground. Kyle and Billy ran up to me and pointed their rifles at me. They called me names and made fun of me because I was scared. I didn't want to move and I just laid on the ground, hearing their insults and being terrified. It was the worst feeling I had ever had in my life. Then the most amazing thing happened. Billy, what the fuck are you doing? I heard a man's voice call out. Dad, we were just playing around, weren't we? He asked me and had a look in his eye that he would shoot me if I didn't agree. They were hunting me, I told Billy's dad. The huge man grabbed the rifle out of Billy's hand and put it on the ground. He then said four words I will never, ever forget. Cut me a switch. Billy looked terrified, but he took out his pocket knife and cut a switch from a bush or something. He handed it to his dad, and his dad whooped his ass with the switch in front of all of us. He reduced Billy to tears, and I could tell Kyle was scared that he would be next. But luckily for him, Billy's dad didn't punish him. Help the boy up, the dad demanded, and Billy did as he was told. Apologize right now. Billy apologized and the dad asked me if I was all right to get home on my own. I told him I was fine. He then grabbed the rifflet in one hand, Billy in other, and the three of them went off, and I think Billy was going to be a lot worse for the wear when he got home with his dad. Although my story has something of a happy ending, it was a terrifying experience. Bullies are scary to begin with, but bullies willing to kill animals for fun are much worse. Billy didn't bully me again, he just gave me horrible looks in school but never even talked to me. This is a true story about what happened to me. I live in a small village near Tunbridge Wells in Kent, England. On one side of our village is a vast forest that has parts that are very thick with trees and some parts that are large clearings. I usually walk there at the weekends, as it is a relaxing and calming place for me. But that changed last weekend. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I was doing my usual route through the woods when I came upon lots of pieces of paper, all scattered in a specific area. There wasn't a breeze, so the pieces of paper hadn't blown off. There must have been about fifty pieces of paper, all with the same phrase on it. Bringing you the laugh. I didn't really think much of it and took a photo of it as a joke. I kept on walking and five minutes later I came across another pile, all with the same phrase, bringing you the laugh. I took another picture and decided I would report it to the non-emergency number when I got home. When I looked up from taking a picture, I saw a bright flash of color in the tree line. I called out, Hello? Who's there? Nothing. I called out again. Hello? Again, nothing. I was thinking I was seeing things, but when I moved on I was cautious. Then, all of a sudden, a clown jumped out from behind a tree. He had a latex mask that covered his head and was wearing a bright yellow, purple, and red jumpsuit covered in blue polka dots. His mouth was revealed on the mask, and he grinned at me. To be honest, I was expecting him to have crooked yellow teeth and I was surprised when he flashed perfect, bright white ones at me. I was a bit taken aback and stuttered out, Who are you? He giggled and said in a sing-song voice, I'm Honky the Clown. I'm your best friend. He kept asking me questions about where I lived, what my name was, and if I locked my doors at night. I was kind of annoyed now and said firmly, This isn't funny. Leave me alone. He stopped grinning. Not funny? he said in an upset voice. Not funny? He kept repeating those two words, but he got more angry every time he said it. After the fifth repetition of the words, he was practically spitting with fuming anger. He then took a kitchen knife out of his back pocket. He lunged at me, and I dodged out of the way, but not fast enough. I didn't see him cut me, but I looked at my arm and saw a long, thin line appear on my skin, oozing blood. I let out a yelp 
took one last look at him and sprinted away. I didn't know where I was going. I just wanted to get away. Nothing happened after that. I ran out of the woods, back home, and I called the police instantly. I had completely forgot about my arm, and it was covered in blood by the time the police got to my house, and they sent for an ambulance. I took them to the place the clown was, but he was gone, and so was the paper. I haven't seen him since. Now a week later, I feel safe to write this here. The police investigated for a few days, asked a few questions but were gone by Wednesday. I still look over my shoulder as if the clown will be there, watching me holding a knife. I must have only been about four or five when I encountered the creatures in my room. I still had a toddler bed, not quite a single, the one that is converted from a large cot. It was low to the ground because I was prone to rolling out in my sleep. Near the foot of the bed, against the wall, there was a big red toy box made of plastic in the shape of a treasure chest. The chest was crammed full of toys, mostly little figures of cartoons I'd watch, street sharks, He-Man, Thundercats, biker mice from Mars, a few Pokemon figures, but mostly action men. I had a nightlight, a little plug in one at the side, the headboard, in the shape of a crescent moon. It glowed a faint orange that stayed on throughout the night. My mum always left my door ajar a little. We had a street light situated right outside the hallway window. It shone a strip of white light onto my wall. The toy box was next to the door. It was a small room but the door just missed the sides of the box when you opened it, as if it had been purposefully billed for the space. I was awakened by the sound of cracking and squeaking, the noise a dog makes when chewing a plastic ball. Small bumps and thuds came from the foot of my bed. I sat up and rubbed my eyes, mouth agape, still practically asleep. I sat and listened for a few seconds, the sound of rustling, things being clanged together, Snapping and gnawing crept over my footboard. As well as the constant clatter, I could make out faint squeaking, very low and quiet, but it was there, more like that of a guinea pig than a mouse. But something was different about it. At the end, instead of rising higher, the tone dropped into a small growl. Slowly, I raised myself onto my hands and knees and crept forward to the bottom of the bed. This side of the room was dark, the nightlight's measly orange glow didn't reach past the bed. I peered over the footboard at the toy box. The lid was open, which was strange, and toys littered the floor. I watched as the noises came from inside the box. Something was moving, but amongst the figures, I couldn't tell what it was. An action man came tumbling out onto the floor. One of the flippers it was wearing had been shredded. The other leg stopped in a mangled stump halfway down. Examining the other toys on the carpet, all of them had bite marks, limbs missing, or faces chewed to a into deformed plastic mush. Little hands, arms, and bits of chewed up parts were scattered on the floor also. Bewildered, I raised myself up and leaned forward, trying to get a better look inside the chest. At first I still couldn't distinguish what was moving. Letting my eyes focus, I made out something furry. At first, I thought it might be the Furby I had in there, but whatever it was had its back to me, hunched over. Its fur looked damp and spiked up in messy clumps. A long, thin tail, covered in small hairs, slithered upright, the end twitching from side to side. I noticed something else move within the chest and, scanning the whole thing, I could make out two more tails, both different sizes, one longer, one shorter, protruding from deeper inside the mound of toys. I'm not really sure why, but whatever they were, I didn't want to be in the room with them. They scared me. Slowly, I crept from my bed and tiptoed towards the door. Reaching it, as it wasn't far, I placed a hand on it, still looking at the box, still watching the tails flicker, I cautiously opened the door. Silently, it swung open, at first. The white stripe of light from the hallway grew as the exit out of the room grew larger. Even though I'd done it countless times, I slowed down once the door moved closer to the edge of the toy box, intently watching the distance between the two. As I slowed, the hinges of the door creaked loudly, making me jump. I froze on the spot. I listened out for the sounds of movement, but there was none. 
The chewing, the snapping, the gnawing, they'd all stopped. Turning my head, I peered at the toy box. I was met with two whitish-yellow eyes. They reflected the light of the crescent moon in the hallway. They didn't seem to look directly at me, more off to my right, at the door. A nose, wrinkled and leathery, twitched as the two long slits extended and retracted. A slow, wheezing breath escaped as a mouth began to open. It grew wider and wider, taking over most of the face. Incredibly sharp, needle-like teeth dripped with saliva. Bits of plastic and fake hair had been impaled and wedged in between them. There seemed to be no pattern to them. They just protruded outwards or downwards, in all forms of thickness as size. What looked like horns or ears, I couldn't really tell, protruded from atop the head and around the eyes, as if the eyelids stretched into a pointed, contorted spike. The creature didn't move, neither did I. Slowly, and with very little noise, toys were pushed out of the way and two more heads arose from the medley, all staring in the direction of the door, all white and yellow aid, like pools of molding milk. My heart drummed on my chest, tears accumulated in the corner of my ease. The creatures were different sizes, from a very small one to one, the size of maybe a large rabbit. This one opened its mouth wider than the other and let out that squeak I'd heard before. It was just air at first, a whisper, which rose into a muted squeak that lasted a second or two, then dropped dramatically into a low grumble, maybe a growl. This snapped me from my frozen state, and I swung the door open as quick as I could and bolted down the hall. I could hear the patter of claws on the laminate flooring behind me. A sensation rose from within my stomach, like a hot burst that flowed through my body. I remember wailing as I ran, feeling the tears stream down my face. My mother's room was at the other end of the hallway, closest to the window. I ran past my brother's room, his door was closed past the open toilet door and slammed into my mother's. The pitter-patter on the laminate changed to thuds on carpet. My mother's bed was one of those ottoman ones, so it was very high off the floor. Before I reached it, I leapt, slamming into the side. Kicking my legs and grabbing handfuls of duvet, I pulled myself up. A pain shot up my left leg, from just above my anky. I cried out and my mum spun round to face me. What's up, babe? She murmured, pulling me onto the bed. There's monsters in my room, I said through tears and shaky breaths. It's just a bad dream, little man. She pulled me close and cuddled me up under the thick feather down duvet. I cried for a while, but the lulling and stroking of the hair my mum did sent me off the sleep. The next morning, I'd pretty much forgot about what happened and, being influenced by my mum's comments, put what I could remember down to a nightmare. Getting up from the bed, before my mum had awoke, I headed back to my room. The door was open wide, and from the hallway I could see the top of the toy box open. Creeping to the doorway, parts of toys still littered the floor. But there was no sounds. It was deathly quiet. I flicked the main light on and scanned the room. Nothing. I knew my mum wouldn't believe me if I told her what had happened. So instead, I picked up all the bits of toys and put them back in the chest. Once I'd tidied up, I walked back into the hallway and headed for the bathroom. I climbed onto the step next to the toilet and pulled down my pajama panta and nighttime nappy and had a wee. My hand brushed past the bottom of my leg when I pulled my pants back up and I winced. Contorting my back, I turned and looked down at my leg. There, at the bottom, was a long, bloodied red mark. I told my mum when she woke up and she said I must have caught it on the bed or the toy box during the night. For a long time I'd forgotten about that memory, until, twenty-six or so years later, whilst in bed with my wife, my three-year-old daughter came running into my room in the middle of the night saying there were monsters in her room with big white eyes. The memories flooded back to me, I haven't been able to find any other story like it, so, out of desperation, I thought I'd put it on here and see what others say. A repressed memory of a bad dream and a coincidence from a three-year-old?